Hello, I'm Dr. Brian Fraser, and in this video I'll be showing how to do Python development using Visual Studio's code. So I've got it installed already here, but let me just walk you through some of the steps. So first you're going to need to download Visual Studio's code. You can just search for it, find the download page, it'll look like this, and then pick your operating system, whatever you want. If you're under Windows, for example, you can either click here on probably the user install for x86, or if you happen to have an ARM64 chip, you can click on that. Likewise over here, for Mac OS, pick the one you want to download uh, for your appropriate chip. Once you've downloaded that, you'll also want to install Python. Uh, however you install it on your operating system might be different. An easy way to do it is just download it from the download page, so python.org slash downloads, and then download the latest version. Currently it's 3.12.5. You could also install these tools through, for example, the Microsoft Windows Store or whatever else makes sense on your operating system. After you've downloaded the executables, for example, you want to run both of them. It doesn't matter the order you install them in. Installing them in the default places with the default options is a perfectly reasonable choice. Then launch VS Code or Visual Studio's code, and it'll look exactly like this. It wants you to pick a theme, pick your favorite, whatever you like the look of. I'm just going to leave it as a default on black, and I'm going to close this welcome screen here. Now to begin with, the big thing you want to do is you want to be on the Explorer window. So I'm going to click on that, and we're not currently in a folder. Anytime you're working on Python code, you probably want to open the folder inside of Visual Studio's code, and I'm going to create that folder now. So I'm going to go here to my, I don't know, my documents, and I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to right-click, right say New, New Folder, and let's call this one CMPT120. Maybe that's the course you're in. So I've now got this folder. This is where I want all of my material for this course to go, and it's all going to be in one place all the time. So now back into VS Code, I'm going to stretch this up just a smidge. I'm going to open a folder, and then I'm going to select on my documents, and then that Compute120 folder that I just created. All right, we're most of the way there. Let's do a couple other little things to get us rolling, running. Um, it's going to ask, do I trust this? I'm going to say, yes, always trust this in the parent folder. Um, that's just a safety feature to prevent things from running maliciously in Visual Studio's code. But since it's my folder, I'm fine with that. I'll close that welcome screen again. It reloaded the folder. And we can see here it's loaded the Compute120 folder, but there's nothing there. So what I probably want to do is make a new folder inside of this for each activity I'm going to work on. Let's say lab one. And then inside of lab one, maybe I want to create a new thing. I'm going to just call this one hello, hello.py. Always naming my files with a .py extension for Python. Um, also, if it is um, uh, making sure there's no spaces in any of my folder names or my file names, that can sometimes mess up the tools. It's going to ask me, do I want to install the Python extension? I'm going to say yes. Generally, most extensions that it offers are probably a good idea. Uh, on the left-hand side where it took us to, you see, we were up here under Explorer View, but if I go down here to Extensions, I can search for all the different extensions. It's suggested one here, but there are other ones, for example, um, you might be familiar with, for example, a C++ extension or something like that. There's lots of tools here that can help you at different times. All we care about now, though, is this one Python extension. So we see that's finished installing, and it gives me some hints here. I'm just going to close this. I don't need that anymore. I'm back here to my hello.py. Uh, so I'm going to put a comment here at the top. This is uh, my test file, and I'll make this a bit bigger. My test file for Python in VS Code. And we'll put in uh, just a print statement, print hello world. Of course we do. We can see as we go, it's giving me some of these tooltip pop-ups that maybe help me uh, understand what I should pass in. In this case, this isn't particularly helpful because it turns out prints a fairly complex one, but other times if you're calling a function, it might be quite useful. So now I'm going to save this. The next thing I could do is I want to run my code. Uh, I'll do that to start with and then show you another way that we want to kind of get a little bit more control over life. So now that I've entered the code here, I can click on the play button run Python file. It may ask me a few questions about which version of Python to use. Uh, generally, picking sort of the default option is probably pretty safe. And there we go, it ran my code. All of this at the top is basically just it 
saying what it was going to do and run it. And then it leaves me at the terminal. There's a command prompt where I can type in commands to the operating system. But of course, what we really wanted to see, we saw right here, hello world. So there we go. We're up and running with VS Code. The one extra thing to do is we want to use what's called a virtual environment. A virtual environment lets me specify which version of Python I want to use. Now, on my computer here, I only had one version. But sometimes, for example, Mac OS might have a default version that's pretty old if you've got a bit of an older Mac. Or just whatever's going on, we want to have a little bit of control. Maybe you've got a couple different projects going on needing different versions or different tools installed. So from inside of VS Code, I want to bring up the command palette, which I can access through the menus somehow, but the easy way I remember is Control shift p so that was Control shift p on a Windows machine. Let's see if we can find it here. Uh, there should be a palette edit. I'm not even sure where to find that. Anyway, oh, there we go. Under View, Command Palette. And it brings up this. And I can start typing in the name of something that I want to do. So I want to do under Python. These are all of the commands that VS Code knows to do different things for Python. And you could go through and scroll through them. What we want to do is we want to create an environment. So I'll type in Python create, and I could create a terminal or an environment. So this will be the one I want to do. And it gives me a couple options. Do I want to do a V environment, a virtual environment, or do I want to do a Conda environment? I can do a virtual environment. It's going to have automatically scanned my system and looked for different Python versions that I can use. Well, this is the only one I've got. I'm going to use it. If you're doing this on your computer, it comes up with more than one. Probably select the biggest numbers here. So three dot and then whatever the biggest number is. So maybe three dot like 18 or something like that if it's in the future. So I'll take three dot 12. And now it can see here it's going to create this virtual environment. On the left hand side in my Explorer window, see there's this dot venv folder that it's creating. I'll expand it and show what's coming into here. This is all the information that is needed for this virtual environment. And by making a virtual environment, it'll mean that I can install things into it and I can pick the version of Python that I want to work with. So it's now done, tells me it's done that. Um, I'm going to close my previous terminal. In fact, if you note here, there's nothing on this terminal. It just says PS for uh, the PowerShell. I'm going to close this with the uh, kill icon, the garbage can. Now if I run this again, it's going to be a little bit different, I think. Oh, it wasn't. Oh, well. I was expecting the terminal to come up looking a little different. Let me just see if I go run. So I'm up here on the menu. I'm going down to terminal, new terminal. So terminal, new terminal. If it tells me, oh, it didn't tell me anything there. But if I run Python, uh, 3 minus minus version, I think it'll tell me the version of Python. There we go. Python minus minus version, and it found the one I'm looking for. So if you do have multiple versions, it's a good way to check that you got the right one there. Now that I've done this, I can actually install things. So if you work more with Python, maybe you've got to install some extra packages or later on. When you first start off, you don't need anything, but you can use a tool called pip. So it's called uh, pip install. It's built into Python, and I might want to install something like there's a, a numpy um, package. And so I'm going to install here uh, numpy, and this is going to install it for this little virtual environment so it doesn't affect anything else. And this will uh, may take a moment to uh, collect everything, install it, and there, now it's done. So I could import into my hello.py whatever it is I wanted to do with numpy or something like that in the future. Now normally I don't care about this venv folder. In fact, it might be hidden sometimes depending on your operating system. You might not even be able to see it. Let me go back to my folder view. This is where I first created this folder. So I'm looking at compute 120. And we can see on my system, I can still see the .env, the venv folder. If you're on a Mac OS or Linux, you probably won't see it because it hides .files to start with. If I go under lab 1, here it's kind of funny because inside of VS Code, I had this file called hello.py. But out here, it just says hello. That's because Windows is hiding the file name extension by default. So it doesn't confuse people, which actually confuses me. So you can go through view and change the settings to make it so it shows all those uh, extensions. But this file is there. So if I create a new file inside of lab one, 
Oops, let me bring it back up here. I can right click, for example, and say new file if I wanted. And I'm going to call this one uh, yay. Yay.py. Print yay. I'll save that. I'm going to go back to my previous program. And there's my yay. It'll be actually yay.py. I think if I right click, go to properties, it should tell me that it's a .py file, a Python file. All right, so that's all I need to know, really. Uh, if I tried to want to send the file to somebody or submit it for Mark somewhere, I would submit these files, whatever file I needed. Um, throughout the process of learning Python, I'm going to probably end up with a bunch of other folders down here. So maybe a lecture week one folder. It'll have some files in here like uh, learnprinting.py. Maybe I have another one that says uh, learn keyboard input .py, always ending into .py, and so forth. The actual names of these doesn't matter so much. Just avoid spaces in them. And then later on, I might I can roll these up and be working on just one file or the other. And they're all listed here across the top, the ones I have open. As you're going, you always want to open this folder again, because it's going to contain all of your files and the setup for this environment. So you're always going to be opening, in this case, the Compute 120 folder, rather than going in and opening just the Lab 1 folder. So I always want to have this kind of structure to work with. It's very easy inside of Visual Studio's code to get there. Now the last thing I want to show is, let's look at uh, doing some, I'm going to run the debugger. And I'm going to make these, each individual ones, doing different things, just so we can see what happens. What I can do is I'm going to set a breakpoint. You can see as I mouse over this, it gives me a little red dot. I'm going to set a breakpoint here at number five, this print hello world four. If I just run the program, it's going to run like always, whipping all the way through, printing everything out. If I wanted to debug, I'm going to let it stop partway through, and then I can see what's going on. So I might have a variable here, for example, something like, uh, well, I'll just leave it for the moment. That's fine. We'll not get ahead of ourselves. And then I can say, go here, and I can select Python Debugger. So what I do is I click on this dropdown, and then I can say Python Debug Python File. I can kind of ignore the other ones. Don't need the launch and that kind of stuff is specific. So I'm going to run this. This is going to load it in the debugger. So it's going to execute my code like before through the Python interpreter, but it's going to stop at my breakpoint, which is right here. So we can see here that it's done Hello World 1, Hello World 2, Hello World 3, and it stopped at this breakpoint. I could investigate variables and a bunch of other things here. I could look at different functions by using the call stack. But for the moment, I'm just going to use these buttons at the top. I'm going to step over my code, and we'll see that as I click Step Over, it prints out a new line of code at the bottom. And it walks me through my code. I can see it executing. When I'm done, it finishes just like before. All right, well, thank you very much for watching. That shows us how we can install VS Code and Python, and then start using VS Code to write our Python file and run it. Thank you for watching, and have a great day.